A case being made for financial support to connect the Caribbean to Africa via direct air travel. In the wake of another cyclist killed on the road, a fresh plea for motorists to be more mindful of vulnerable road users. Barbados Defence Force soldiers undertaking commando training and in sports, the first title of the National Senior Games has been decided. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Good evening, I'm Pearson Bowen. Prime Minister Mia Amal Motley has put forward a proposal for financial support to connect the Caribbean to Africa via direct air travel. She's made the case in her call for the establishment of a blue ribbon commission between the African Union and CARICOM during the 30th AfriExim Bank annual meetings held in Accra, Ghana. Ms. Motley is urging financial institutions like the AfriXM Bank and those in the Caribbean to support this mission of connectivity. She has told a PAC meeting of political and business leaders in Africa that she expects it will create new economic opportunities beyond compare on both sides of the Atlantic. The Africa Exim Bank, the Africa Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank, the CARICOM Development Fund have a duty to work with us all to ensure that whatever is necessary to make both the financial and economic case of connectivity is put in place because the next major step of cementing this relationship is not about leaders coming and mixing with other leaders but it is about ordinary people moving in their own time and space to be able to make those friends, to make new family, and to make new business. Prime Minister Motley has also urged African leaders to consider a greater level of functional cooperation and investment in a number of other critical areas. These include in the procurement and manufacture of pharmaceuticals and provision of tourism services, among others. And it must now also as it did in the area of the African Medical Supplies Platform, continue where pooled procurement is critical, both to access difficult provisions or equipment, where our orders, as I said, are simply too small, and to guarantee better pricing that we cannot do as market takers and not as market shapers. The Prime Minister also expressed concern about visa restrictions affecting tourism from Africa and is calling for the issues to be given urgent attention. In the case of Barbados, we currently home port cruise ships and take people from the United Kingdom every week in the winter season to cruise the Caribbean. And when you ask those in Africa, why aren't we seeing more people, there is a problem of the transit visas in the North Atlantic countries. If we allow the denial of visas to our people in the North Atlantic countries to define how we can trade, then we truly deserve whatever comes to us. The Prime Minister's comments come as the AfriExim Bank prepares to launch its regional headquarters here in Barbados next month, and as the CARICOM Development Fund is now a shareholder in the African Financial Institution. Ms. Motley's visit to Accra means, meanwhile, forms part of a two-week overseas mission where she's been also pushing the Bridgetown Initiative, promoting a better deal for small island developing states like Barbados in responding to issues of climate change. She's also to pay an official visit to China and the trip winds down in Paris where she's expected to address a major climate conference. Well, the promised security measures at the Frederick Smith Secondary School are very much in place and in play. President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Rudy Lovell, told CBC News that his members reported a smooth and quiet day as classes took place under the new prescribed protocols. These include gate closure at 9.30 a.m., parent appointments, a designated parent holding area for those without appointments away from the children. Mr. Lovell adds, however, the teachers would like some additional measures. The gate was closed at 9.30 as indicated by the principal. 
However, there is still need for additional security to man the gate in the morning. And we are hopeful that the Board of Management can address this issue in the shortest possible time frame to enhance the safety for students, teachers, the ancillary staff, and visitors to the school compound. Additionally, we were informed that exam papers for tomorrow's exams have been printed. Generally, the BUT is happy with today and will continue to press for the resolution of the concerns highlighted by our members at the Frederick Smith Secondary School. The Barbados Road Safety Association has called for motorists to be more vigilant on the roads and look out for vulnerable road users such as cyclists and pedestrians. In a statement issued today, President Roland Lowe bemoaned the 10 lives lost on the road so far this year. Just last Saturday, cyclist Peterson Griffith died in an accident involving a vehicle. Mr. Lowe says the association, in conjunction with Pastor Jamal Miras and other supporters, are seeking to expand the range of counselling sessions available to families of victims. Pastor Miras has emphasized that every effort will be made to ensure that individuals who are unable to physically access the support services will still receive the help they need. Whether through telephone connections or leveraging various technological platforms like Zoom or other similar applications, our commitment is to bridge the gap and reach out to those in need. Arrangements are also being actively made for counselors and support services to meet individuals at their convenience wherever they may be. Our team at the association, along with our dedicated members, have committed ourselves to doing everything possible to extend assistance and make our roads safer for all. Meanwhile, residents of Greenwich's St. Lucie are shocked and saddened by the death of one of their friends, Peterson Griffith, who they commonly referred to as Jeff. The 57-year-old cyclist was struck by a vehicle on Saturday in the district as he was heading to his Northumberland home. He was transported from the scene by ambulance but was later pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. I know Jeff a long, long time. He was a very loving, friendly fellow. He would make it to anybody. But he was a no nonsense man as well. It's hard to know that he's dead the way he did. I am, uh, me and almost everybody in the street, we're going to all miss him. He always come into Granges and he makes sure all the fathers down here, everybody down here like, like Jeff. He very had, he never had fathers, he never had any problem with him down here, you know. I know Jefferson Griffith for over, I could say about 20, 20 to 21 years. Um, he was my friend. He used to be by me every day. He would come and help me with the sheep. He would help me do any little thing that I have to do around the home. And he had just left my home when this accident here happened. Jeff was a nice person. He was well loved in the area by everyone. He was very helpful to everyone in the community. I must say that about Jeff. Yes, he's a nice person, the church man, everything. And he will sorely be missed. A brazen bandit robbed a police officer of money and other valuables at gunpoint. This was confirmed by the Department of Communications and Public Affairs of the Barbados Police Service, which indicated that lawmen were indeed investigating the matter. The name of the officer, however, has been withheld. Lawmen say that incident occurred around 28 minutes after 11 last night in the Silver Hill Christchurch area. According to the police, the armed bandit robbed the officer of his wallet containing just over $120 and two gold chains before fleeing the scene. We'll take a break here, but coming up, the just concluded SIDS ministerial conference on NCDs was not just another talk shop. The Healthy Caribbean Coalition sees the recently concluded SIDS Ministerial Conference on NCDs and Mental Health as far more than a talk shop and one which the man on this street will benefit from. Dr. Kenneth Connell, chair of the coalition, says conferences of this magnitude sometimes leave you asking questions, but this one provided solutions. He was speaking on the sidelines of the conference. This is the first time where I think collectively, and this started with the Prime Minister's address on Tuesday evening, collectively we have realized two things. One, 
we are only heard as one voice. So smaller and developing states must speak as one voice in things such as the imports that we bring into our countries, how we communicate things, how we address the NCDs. And the second thing is there is an urgency. So just like a pandemic where you had an infectious disease affecting everyone and there was an urgency in response, the NCD response is urgent, but it's not just urgent for our generation, it's urgent for the future. Religious organizations have been urged to join with government on its national peace program. The call has come from Minister in the Office of the Attorney General with responsibility for crime prevention, Corey Lane. He was speaking during a press conference called by the organizers of Youth Fest Barbados, which is an event intended to guide young people on the right path and get them back to God. I came here to a press conference, but I leave as a partner. I leave as a partner because I challenge you to help us with our programs in the National Peace Program. I also offer you our assistance with your programs. Not here, not as a political promise, but as a guarantee that what we are doing and what you're doing, if it aligns and it brings wholesome and positive activity to our young people that I am on board and the government of Barbados is on board. The harvest is plenty. The laborers are few. Please join us. Let me connect you with the laborers of at-risk and high-risk young people out there that we are working with on a daily basis. Youth Fest Barbados will be staged from June the 25th to July the 1st. One of the organizers, Carlos Cobham, says given the level of crime in the country, it's important to reach out to the youth and have a positive impact on them. Each and every single night of Youth Fest, we will be guiding them, yes. We will have the Sunday, Super Sunday. We will have, yes, Money Monday, teaching them about finances and stewardship. We will have Talent Tuesday, where they would have the opportunity to express themselves and uh, utilize their gifts. And then we will have uh, also Wholesome Wednesdays, where we get to discuss real topics, keep it real with our young people. You know, some young people don't have an outlet where they could just be free to be themselves and, and just share. We want them to know that we care, we love them, and to create that space for them there where they can just have a voice. That's what we want to give the young people a voice here in Barbados. Barbados Defense Force soldiers and others from the neighboring islands are currently engaged in a rigorous training exercise to determine if they have what it takes to be commandos. The men set off at five yesterday afternoon. Wendy Burke spoke with the course leads about this grueling training, which more than half of those taking the challenge fail. It's one thing to study the theory in the classroom, but quite another to transfer that knowledge to practical situations. That's what these 26 Barbados Defence Force soldiers will attempt to do when they're joined by six others from neighbouring islands and deployed into the fields and hills of Dominica. The course began here with 47 soldiers, but only these men made the cut. However, as the Barbados Regiment's commanding officer, Major Pedro Drakes, put it, the real test of mind and body will now commence. The course prepares the soldiers when they are on island or if they are deployed to in operation overseas. So they have the necessary skills to represent the force and the Barbados Defence Force by extension. The soldiers loaded some of their limited gear on board the Barbados Coast Guard ship Trident yesterday evening. Their packs included meals ready to eat or MREs, which have a stove and the meal in this box, jerry cans of water, their bergens and bedrolls. Some soldiers carried hydration camel packs. Major Drakes added that skills in several areas will be assessed. All of the map reading, all of the necessary specialized skills um, that the commando ethos um, actually seeks for those persons to have on completion of the course. Because there are seven commando qualities that each of these soldiers must have that embodiment at the end of the course. So we are looking for things of confidence, courage, cheerfulness in adversity, discipline, determination, um, there's also team spirit, and last but not least, physical fitness. It's a very demanding course. They also prepared the vessel they would use to get from ship to shore, the inflatable rubber crafts, IRCs. 
There was also weapons distribution, as they must carry both the Bergen and weapon for the exercises. Commando Course Officer and Regimental Sergeant Major Warrant Officer Class 1 Colin Marshall said the four tests have tight timelines. They have to do the assault course and they're supposed to be done in a time limit of five minutes or less where they negotiate various obstacles. Then the next test will be they run nine miles in 90 minutes or less. Then they have to do 30 miles in seven and a half hours or less. And then the final one will be the endurance course where they traverse various types of terrain over a period of, over a time frame of 40 minutes or less. And then after that, they have to engage targets that are set up. So they have to get, they have to pass the, the run and they have to get a maximum of six uh, out of 10 on the targets. If the soldiers pass all but don't get the required targets, it's back to basics. And they have to do it all over again. However, Major Drake says they have a year to regroup before they try again. The group landed in Dominica this morning. Wendy Burke, CBC News. Sports Night, brought to you with the compliments of Great Health Works, agents for Omega XL. Well, now we know Damien Best is so afraid of snakes. He joins us now in the sports world. Damien, good evening to you. Pearson, where did you get that story from? <laughs> <laughs> good evening to good evening to our viewers and listeners. Definitely not. I definitely will not be in Trinidad. But the first team battle, a uh, team title of the 2023 National Senior Games has been decided. Spooners Hill Firebirds they completely outplayed Co Williams Rangers to win the Masters netball competition. Playing at the netball stadium in Waterford last night, the Firebirds flew away with the victory by a 16 goal margin. Netball Stadium, the venue for this Masters showdown between C.O. Williams Rangers and Spooners Hill Firebirds in the Red Bibs. The Firebirds roll back the years with some real high energy, up-tempo netball. Goal attacks, Kerry Ann Brathwit and Colleen Griffith supported goal shooter Lydia Bishop well. Brathwit with five goals from nine attempts, Griffith netting three from eight. Rangers with possession now. Quick feed into Heather Bell, lines up the shot and drills it. The Firebirds built up a handy cushion 8-1 to one in the first quarter as Rangers' defense seemed out to sea, not finding a way to thwart this free-flowing offense. Change of ends. Bishop was using that long reach and height advantage to good effect. No. Not going to miss from that range. She scored 24 goals from 35 attempts. Still has the Midas touch. Just when it looked like Rangers were getting into rhythm, the Firebirds extended their goal margin. Quick reposition from Bishop. Knocks down another one. 14 to 6 at halftime then. The goal defense could only try to put a body on Bishop, but there was no aerial challenge. Bishop was using solid footwork to get under the pool. The rest is history. Rangers had a few shining moments, but they were not as consistent. Firebirds intercepted by the center. And after a couple passes, goal attack, Cheryl Steele sinks it. Miss seven of 11 attempts. The supporters loving it. Rangers still down though by 12, 11 to 22 to end the third quarter. Skip ahead late in the fourth. Rangers attempting to make the scoreline reflect a decent finals effort. Off the miss from Heather Bell. Steele cleans it up. However, it was just too much to haul in the Firebirds. Bishop in the kitchen and cooking. In the end, Spooner's Hill Firebirds speed into a comfortable 32 to 16 victory over CO Williams Rangers. The National Senior Games Masters Champions lifting the trophy. Well played indeed. In business now, former workers on government's ash cleanup program and others are being given an opportunity to have their own business. It is coming through the Be Your Own Boss project, a partnership between the Barbados Trust Fund Limited and private sector company equip for you Through monies from the fund, individuals can access a startup kit for auto valet, landscaping, agriculture, wood and metalwork. 
The fund's manager of administration and operations, Michael Bowen, says they're happy to be associated with the venture, which offers people affordable lending rates. Some of you may see on the flyers, monthly payment, 155. I will say to you, I'm going to give you $155. You're going to say to me, but well, $155 really can't do nothing. That can barely manage a, a buy your groceries. Hmm? $155. So we're saying, see it in that light. It is not such a big sum that you should have to pay back. $155, $150 on, on a 5000 loan that you're getting over a three-year period. And Toby Johnson of equip for You has been speaking about some of the benefits of the project. Here at equip for You, we've created special product packages with some of the world's leading equipment manufacturers, tailored to the required industry sectors. Included in the packages, you will receive special savings, free bundled products, product training, both in-house and online, warranty and after-sales support. We've partnered with the Barbados Trust Fund to offer you excellent finance terms and top-tier business training courses. Together, we believe this is a golden opportunity. And again, I congratulate you for showing the, taking the first step in this process. A senior banking official in Barbados suggests that despite the availability of several services and facilities in the corporate sector, more men than women are coming forward. Senior retail manager at Republic Bank Barbados, Sandra Reefer Wallison, pointed to a level of hesitancy among women. She was among the panel for the fourth edition of the Caribbean Development Bank's President's Chat, which with a focus on innovative financing for women. Ms. Reefer Wallison reminded that the bank has specific products geared towards female entrepreneurs to build their business. Republic Bank is very keen on giving back to communities. It's something that is very dear to our heart and something that we do, I mean, every, every day. And we have a program called The Power to Make a Difference. And this, and otherwise, known, otherwise known as PMAD, and I'm looking at somebody in the audience who didn't quite know what I was talking about the other day, and that was another joke. But our Power to Make a Difference program actually is the genesis for how this EBB program came about. Now. Originally, the, the Power to Make a Difference program really was just for charity. But we felt, you know, looking around and throughout the Caribbean, we recognized that we have a lot of women who are awesome entrepreneurs. President of the CDB, Dr. Hygienus Jean Leon, in his contribution, says the region is still being antiquated, using antiquated ideas that do not take advantage and take development into consideration. You cannot drive development for tomorrow based upon the model of yesterday, which is that governments own, governments lead, and governments are being required to drive development. And so we think it is equally wrong to believe that private sector will do all the things that I said government did. But what we think is the more promising route going forward is one of a new type of partnership. A partnership between the public and the private sector that embraces national development. Time for another look at sports with Damien Best. Damien. Thanks so much, Pearson. Well, the newly formed Barbados Track and Field Alumni Association will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Carifta Games with a week of activities. Treasurer and chairperson of the organizing committee, Joyan Clark, outlined the planned week of activities running from July 13th to 17th. It includes a relay run on July 16th involving 50 legs of 400 meters in distance with former athletes carrying the baton. It starts and finishes at the Botanical Gardens and will be followed by a family fun day. Clark says the week will begin with a meet and greet session followed by a games evening both at the NUPW headquarters in Dalkeith. The third day of the reunion will be Saturday the 15th and this will be our biggest event. This is going to be awards, gala and dinner. Again, it will be here at NUPW headquarters starting at 7 p.m. 
this event hosted by the BTFA to honor the outstanding accomplishments of Caritha athletes. Now, every athlete who attends this gala will be presented with a Carifta Certificate of Participation, hopefully signed by Mike Sands, who is the NACAP president, as well as Catherine Jordan, who is our AAB president, as well as Michael Jules, who is the BTFAA president. Also, during the gala, we will honor 16 former Carifta athletes, inclusive of winners of the Austin City Award, current record holders, the athlete with the most Carifta medals, the athlete with the most Carifta gold medals, the youngest Carifta athlete. Those are the kind of categories that we are looking at. We are also looking to acknowledge our coaches, our administrators, our medical fraternity, and even the media because all of these persons played a very important part in the development of the Carifta Games over the past 50 years. Well, President Michael Jules explained that the association, which was founded on November 5, 2022, is to provide a forum for present and former Barbadian athletes to network and seek resources to assist present national athletes with things such as training and financial needs. This is very important because um, Joyanna and myself, we were recipients of track and field scholarships and there were numerous persons who had um, hardships of different kinds and it would have been nice to have some assistance and association that you could call on to render assistance of whatever kind. So we thought that it was necessary to have such an association in place and as you heard not it's not just financially but for all other purposes and we we have also tried to include athletes who never return to Barbados who are now living in the US in Canada wherever who can offer assistance to these our current crop of athletes and that's our time tonight. Thank you for spending it with us. I'm Pearson Boeing. For the crew, to all of you, good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for visiting us. Now, if you want to see more stories like this one, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can always go to cbc.bb for the latest news and current affairs.